Okay, so if you open the Boom Render Distro file, we're gonna we're gonna talk about rendering this out now. So in this file, you actually have some Aero Live right here that will make an explosion for you. It's not gonna be the one that you've created and made beautiful, but we're going to load in our own cache. Now, I've broken this file up into segments using backdrops, as you can see. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace this entire Aero creation with our cache. So let's get our cache in. File cache. And then you'll just need to navigate to, to where you've cached this out to load it in, obviously. I'll do it in mine. So you get the idea. We don't want a bob. This is an open BDB. And I happen to call mine Boom Lesson. And then you can just hit enter now and say yes, because you're not writing anything, you're reading it. And then come back in here and just hash, 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 as per. So this should now be reading the cache. Make sure it's set to read mode. And then let's take our first object out and just drop it into this update box or position. And you can see that it, the cache has changed on screen. This is now the cache I wrote out. And this stuff isn't being calculated. It shouldn't affect you. It's not hurting. It's all of that kind of thing. So let me really quickly take you through this file and explain what's going on. The task we have before us is that we have to render out basically four, probably maybe three for doing the sprite sheets. Yeah, probably. Yeah, we need to render out three or four different sequences of images to turn into a sprite sheet for Unreal to use. We need to render out our emission for temperature and basically how bright it's going to be. We need to render out our smoke, so the black parts, which turns up a bit more, a bit heavier later on. Because I've cached it, I should be able to jump to it. So we want to render out our smoke. And that's lit from the top with a dome light. So that's just a basic, not very bright light that's emulating the sky. So that's emission, that's smoke. We also need to render out our normal so that if we need to, we can relight this in Unreal so we can change the direction of the light. And the normals is what's going on here. See, it says normals. So given everything that you know about volumes, how do you get normals on a volume? Well, that's what this is all about. So what we're doing here is we're taking the voxel fog density and we're checking to see which parts of the fog density are greater than 0 0.005. And then we're finding everything that isn't greater than 0 0.005, 0 0.005, and we are removing it from the voxel position array. And we are constructing points. So we're taking our voxel positions and making points out of them. We're turning that into a volume, which is set to level set. And then here we have another cache. And this is a Bob cache. At the moment, it's set to pass through because we're going to do our caching later. But this is the first cache you would need to run before you do anything else. And what this does is it caches out the sign distance field here as a separate file. You see it's a Bob file, it'll be in a different directory and all of that kind of thing. And then it's sampling the volume gradient based on the volume sign distance of that cache, or in this case, the points to volume. The reason we do that is that the gradient of an SDF field are the normals of the volume. That's just how it works. And then I am changing the range from minus one, minus one, minus one to one, 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 uh, to two, zero, 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 one, one, one. Setting the geometry property as voxel normal. So this is now carrying voxel normals with it. Just to be safe, I'm re-updating my position and getting the position again. And don't worry too much, because what this position is doing is building a norm, voxel normal display for me, which is great. And then I can actually turn that on, give it a second. It's got to, because we're not cached, it's, it's got to work everything out as we do it. And now you can see the normals. It's a bit of a hot mess, but those are the normals of the volume. So that's just a little bit for display. And you notice that the normals are coming out from here, not from where we calculated them way back there. And there's a reason for that too, because game engines tend to like tangent normals. And again, we've got another little backdrop here that's, that's showing us what we're doing. So this takes the normals, which are these guys. See, there's a box of normal there. And running through a bunch of math. So it's finding orthogonal vectors, getting the tangent, the normal, the binormal, 
doing some matrix reorganization here and then multiplying the matrix by the normal that's coming out, normalizing that. And that's our tangent space normals for the volume, which is what the display is showing. And then we send that out to be cached. And that's going to be our final VDB cache. Why are we caching again? Well, when we render this in Arnold for our sprite sheets, we're not going to render the Bifrost. We're going to render the cache through an Arnold volume because it's faster, because it's, it looks better, and because it's easier. So what we do here, this is at the moment set to parser, obviously. What we do here is we're going to cache this out again, and then we're going to render it. So this is the shader here. And again, we change the shader on the Arnold volume manually, and we render twice. Let me take you through the rendering real quick. So what you would do then is, let's just delete that. That's gone, and let's hide our Bifrost for just a second. Give it a minute. So right now we don't have a cache to render with normals on, which is all right. I'm just going to use the cache that I've already got just to show you how to set up an Arnold cache, and then I'll pause the video and we'll get on to caching the rest of it. So the cache I've already got is this guy. What I'm going to do is click here, and I'm just going to copy the directory it's in, just just because life is makes life easier. So now we are done with Bifrost for the moment. Let's hide the Bifrost, hide that, and we will go to Arnold volume. So here's just a basic Arnold volume. Let's close down our Bifrost editor and get our attribute editor up. And the Arnold volume is asking you for things. So first thing you need to do is load the cache. that and make sure we turn file sequence on okay so it's gone off to have a think and so now I can just drop out a render here's one I prepared earlier let's just zoom in on the perspective shape and reload that render a bit more you can see I've got my case showing up zoom in a little bit more so you can see it and I was rendering it which is perfect, that, that's pretty much what I want. I'm going to need to do this twice with two shaders. If we come into the node editor and take a look at the volume shape, you can pretty much just see what's going on here in terms of rendering and things. You will need to go across to your hypershade and you will absolutely need to make sure that you have two shaders set up, which will come with the file and I'll be giving you the file to look at. The moment the shader that's on it is the standard volume and it's set up for Bifrost. It's pretty much bog standard, a little bit of density animation just to fade it out at the end with my cache or the, the new cache I've built, which, which is fine, but it's using voxel temperature for the emission. It's using voxel temperature for the temperature and there's, there's not really much else changed here. And yeah, this is a little bit of a Maya lesson, but it's worth it. Sign the material. Goes away and has a think about that. And then we can have another look at the render just by re-rendering it. And you can see, there it is. That's just got that shader on it. You would have noticed in the hypershade that there are two shaders. So let's rename this. Beauty and layers. And then we have a voxel normal shader. And this one will render out the normals for us because we need it as a separate image sequence. And now it's time to talk a little bit about AOV. So if you go to your render settings, which is this little button here, go to AOVs, you will notice that I've already set up the two, the two AOVs that you need, the emission, which is going to render out temperature of the volume for us, so how, how bright and hot it is. You can check that by just looking here. So we've just changed it from beauty, which is all the combined stuff, to emission, which is one of the, one of the bits of data we're going to need in Unreal. We also have volume direct. What volume direct is, is just the lighting with no emission. So you will need to render these two. Luckily, when you set off a batch render in Arnold, it will render those for you automatically. Let's talk about the batch rendering and the render setup. These guys are set up to render as TIFF files, okay? From zero to 64, and then you would just batch render them from the render menu. So if I go to rendering here, Render, there it is, batch render. 
Once you've done that, you will need to switch the shader over to the normal and render again. And what comes out of here, what comes out of here are folders. You can see this is my test here, so boom render test particles. And if you take a look in the PNG file, you can see, the PNG folder, you can see the results. So this is the beauty, and this has been run through a sprite maker, and this is 4K by 4K. Each one of these guys is 512 by 512, which is why in the render, if you have a look at the resolution down here, in the render settings, it's 512 by 512. And to give you an idea as well, we'll go to the emission and we'll go to PNG for the emission and we will just look at the output there. And you can see that's just the emission values. The reason we do this is to bring that data into Unreal and use Unreal's shader engine to actually build a good looking explosion for us. Now, the last one I wanted to show you is, appears I haven't rendered my normals, but let me show you how to do that. So that goes, that takes us back into Bifrost because I need to make a new cache that has the, vol the volume normals on it, which this one doesn't. And, and you can check by looking at the grids that you've got. And I have density and temperature and velocity, but I have no normal in there. So let's hide the volume. Let's go back to Bifrost. Open up the graph editor, like so. Focus on the Bifrost graph. Sometimes you just have to restart it to get the cache to come back. So what we need to do now is first do the cache for our SDF. So this is the bit that generates the normals. So just like we did before, I'm going to go write mode and I'm going to give it a directory. And it's going to be in cache, Bob, and we'll call this STF cache is fine. That's cool, STF cache of sign distance. And then I'll pause the video and I'll come back when I've got a cache. So there we go, we, have a, we now have an STF cache. Let's switch that over to read mode so that we're not writing all the time and things will be a little faster. It's just going to have a little think. There we go. So this is our final frame here. It's still visible because we're not running through the shader just yet. So now we have an SDF cache and it's going to be able to generate the normals for us pretty well. So the next step, of course, as this gets progressively slower, <laughs> is to come down to the end and we will cache it. We will do a, a VDB pass-through cache and we can load that up in the Arnold volume and start rendering passes with it. Once we get to the point where we're rendering passes in Arnold, which is like a cache and a half away right now, we're done with Maya. That's where Maya stops and Bifrost. So Bifrost has actually stopped already. We're just building our caches now so that we can output to the Arnold volume. Once we've rendered that Arnold volume, Bifrost stops and we go into something that'll make us a, a, sp a sprite sheet or an atlas if you like. And also something that'll do optical flow, which is building our motion vectors from 2D images basically. I have some recommendations, but I'm not going to show you how to do all of that. What I have done is linked, put a link in the folder that will show you a really, really good YouTube tutorial that shows you how to take those image sequences and turn them into what you want to turn them into. I'll try and find some more links and put them in there as well. So I'm just going to pause now and I'm going to make the final VDB cache and then we'll go do some rendering. Okay, so that's finished. Let's turn that back to read mode. And once this is done, we can disconnect this. So now it's just reading the cache. I've broken this again. Leave that to be cached where it is. And we can just make sure that we've got all of the things we need to go to Arnold just by checking the properties of the cache here. And really what we're looking at is the grids. Fog density, normal. We've got position as well if we need it. Temperature and velocity. That's absolutely perfect. That's exactly everything we need to do the Arnold rendering. So now it's time to stop that and we'll just turn off Bifrost just by hiding it. Make sure we've got the right directory and everything. So I'm just going to boom vol atters. That's cool. We'll turn on the volume back on. And now we're done with Bifrost. We can just send Bifrost away and we're working with Arnold now. So let's reload this. 
but we'll load the right one this time. So we just grab any old one, first one's fine, load it, and come back up in here. One, two, three, four. And you can see that we now have some more grids. We have voxel fog density, voxel normal, voxel position, voxel temperature, and voxel velocity. Just fabulous. So let me just save a version of this. Let's grab that guy and let's just do a quick render of it and see what we've got. Nothing much should have changed. There we go. That's looking a bit better. And maybe zoom in on that a bit so we can get a closer look. Yes, there's a reason I'm using IPR. So now what we can do is set off a batch render and it will render these out for us. And when we've done that, let's just pretend we've done that because we've done that. Once we've done that, we can then change the shader to the normal shader and render again, but we'll need to change our grids here as well. So if we just take a look at the normal shader and the hyper shade, what does the normal shader want? It wants the voxel normal and it wants the voxel fog density. So if we just minimize that for a second, we grab our Arnold volume and we assign the shader to it, assign material to viewport selection like so. And then we just need to come back to our volume attributes and we just need to change our grids. So we just want fog, fog density and normal and we don't want anything in the velocity grids. And this should render the, the normals out to the emission channel unless it breaks. So let's have a look at that and see what we can get. You can see now it's a bit small and everything, but you can see now that it's rendering the voxel normals. And we would render that out as a separate render pass. So we'd have to render it twice. And that's why we render it twice. I mean, obviously we'd need to go back to our, I think it's our front camera here. Just to make sure we've got our volume looking. And we'd need to set up so that our volume is at the very bottom because this is our renderable area. But we, we roughly have a good size here. So what you would do at this point is start zooming in here. And we probably don't want to, we want to render the front shape. You've got something like this. Again, we're still looking at the alpha channel here. You just want to make sure you don't go off the top, more or less. And we have, so we'll come down a little bit. But you get the idea. What I'm doing is fitting the whole render into this 5 by 512 by 512 square. So once I've got it looking okay here, it's not rushing off the top. Make sure of that that's looking pretty good. It's probably a, probably a guess. Then we can come back to the beginning. Actually, you're not going to be much at frame two. Let's go to frame eight. And that's pretty much where it starts. So we can just fiddle it a little bit. So we've got it starting down here. Or even a little lower. And then you can again just check your final frames. And that's looking pretty good. So I'll stop my IPR now. At this point, you set off the renders. So you render you render it twice. Okay, so it, it can, can also help to do something like AA volume normals. And then another AI volume for the for the beauty pass and that kind of thing. But that's basically it. Cheers.